Why did every cartoon coming out of Europe around this time have like the exact same art style? Like, come on, you have Winx, you have Witch, Angel's Friends, and now we're covering Tara Duncan. They all look super similar. The only show I can think of that came from Europe uh, with that didn't doesn't share the same art style as Code Lyoko, and that's because it doesn't have the same demographic. Anyway, Tara Duncan, the book series written by Sophie. Oh my gosh, here we go. <clears throat> Anduin Mamakonian. I really hope that's not gonna come up again. I was wrong. I I was very wrong. There's not a lot to her according to her Wik Wikipedia page. She wrote the Tara Duncan series along with a few more series after that. According to her awkwardly Google translated blurb on XO edition. Born in 1961, Sophie Anduin Mamikonian was raised mainly by her grandparents with a lot of sweets and selected books. But this fine training is perverted when her stepfather introduces her to science fiction. At the age of 12, bedridden by an attack of appendicitis, Sophie begins to write first and feverish drafts of fantasy. Since then, the pen has never left his fingers. She wrote Tara Duncan between 1987 and 1990, but only managed to get it published in 2003, when magic became fashionable thanks to Harry Potter. <coughs> also the worst witch that Harry Potter ripped off. <coughs> but what it fails to mention is that well, it's hard to get a good read on the author, but there's a few things online that signals that she may be eccentric, to put it nicely. She has claimed to be the heir to the ancient throne of the medieval kingdom of Armenia and carries the unofficial title of HRH Princess Sophia Anduin Mamikonian. Okay, before I continue this video, uh, while I'm editing, I just wanted to point out that this was this was taken completely out of context, so I have absolutely no idea if she actually believes what she just said, or if it's just a fun little quip that she said in order to make kids happy. Who knows? She holds a ma an MA in diplomacy and strategy. She currently divides her time between family and writing. She's a contributor to the Children's Health Fund, founded by Paul Simon and Dr. Erin Erwin Redliner and the Princess Sam Foundation for Armenia. Okay, wow, wasn't expecting that. Um, you know what? I don't care if she's eccentric. She sounds fun, and if it's not hurting anyone, then why should I care? You are a princess. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I remember back in the day when there was times when you could, you know, if you were just weird, it would hurt your sales in immensely, but now, so long as you're just not an awful person, you're pretty good. You can be as weird as you want to be. And people will be like, hey, at least you're not in jail. At least you're not a felon. That That's the state of celebrities nowadays and authors. Wow, times have changed for the worse. Now I can't speak for how popular the books were, but given the promotional footage they released, it definitely looks like the books were popular, at least outside of America. But as most of you know, Tara Duncan was adopted into a series that aired on Disney XD in France and on Cabillion. Brought to you by the same animation studio that brought you Code Lyoko brings you Tara Duncan, an excitable girl with a lot of character, along with her whimsical comedic relief friend, Cal. This is Sparrow. Please ignore the anger monster transformation. They have these magic crystal watches that tracks magic that allows them to solve magical mysteries. I think it's funny how the first episode just lets stuff happen without explanation. Their master is a dragon and they gotta hunt down a siren. They're obviously from a magical realm that came to Earth and you just kind of figure it out as the show goes along. And frankly, I like it. It feels like they treat the audience like they aren't stupid. Get right into the action. Via Transportus. Where'd you get your Transportus license in a box of Cracker Jacks? Whoa, you could get a Transportus and Cracker Jacks back in 2010? Man, now all I can get is a sticker in literally every box. Some shows during this time used CG in the forefront of some scenes, but Moon Scoop used CG just as a spice to flesh out scenes. <laughs> Did she seriously use a low-level stealth game mechanic? Huh? Hmm. Must have been the wind. What happened to all of my worldly possessions? Also, there's this dude who is human that hunts down magical creatures and uses Tara Duncan to track them down. I'm going to a concert. Whoa, slow down or we won't have enough oxygen to make it out of here. I don't care. 
because death is a preferable outcome to not going to my favorite concert. This actually sounds like the logic of a 12 year old. In other words, there are always solutions. One simply needs to ask. Wait, if there's always solutions, then is there going to be a big bad evil guy? If all their needs are met, what motivation would someone need to be a bad guy? I know there's a big bad evil guy in this show, I know there is, and I'm ready to either be pleasantly surprised or rip this show a new one. At last, I will have my revenge for what your mother did. Revenge, of course. It's so obvious. I forgot there's always just crappy people, regardless of being magic or not. You know, I can never make any non-spell friends because- Non-spell? I don't see what's wrong with human or something, but okay. Also, she has a Pegasus in her pocket. They don't elab elaborate on it. I'm, I'm sure it's important somehow. Tara lives with her magical master grandmother, Isabella, in her incredibly decadent home, but and her great-grandfather is a dog now. This one specifically, not sure why yet. <laughs> something. A V for vampire. And this looks like an S. Serena. Of course. There's absolutely nothing else that V and S could possibly stand for. Everyone has shoes that have their race and name on the bottom. It's so obvious. Man, I don't know why only about like half the murders in America are solved when clearly these kids know what they're doing. Why haven't the police thought of the old initials on the shoe trick? I mean, really? Wait, I, what I really appreciate in this show is the setting and scenery. The architecture of a lot of the buildings and stores they visit, heck, just walking down the street looks really good. The beginning of the season, there's a lot of standalone episodes where they encounter a magical creature causing havoc and they need to figure out how to solve who's behind it and fix the problems they create. It was your father's. He found it in Himlia. He must have told her about your family curse. Every main character seems to have some sort of tragic and or mysterious past, and each of them seem to have strange relationships with their parents. Or at least, if their parents aren't dead, then it feels weird how they aren't with them when, since they're supposed to be so young. Master Chen may know a lot about philosophy, but he doesn't know a thing about 17-year-old girls. Wait, no! Tara Duncan's supposed to be 12 years old. You're telling me they changed it for the show? Well, at least this time they look closer to the age they're supposed to be. I mean, if someone tried to tell, show that Im image, that design of Tara Duncan and be like, this is a 12 year old girl, I'd be like, uh, no, you're wrong. Those proportions are very off. I was planning to comment on how they don't look like they're 12. However, I guess now it makes sense. Yay for character design. Boo for not adhering to the books. And the enemies they encounter have relationships with their parents, like this harpy who loved Sparrow's father and wants to be human. I'm thinking of going to see the remake of Beauty and the Beast. No thanks. I know that story by heart. But it stars Emma Watson, and it doesn't release until several years from now. How could you not want to watch a movie that doesn't exist yet? The odd thing about Tara in the show is that she's really aggressive, and Cal is relaxed and easygoing, but there's just not a lot of range for Tara's emotion in the beginning of the season. I can't stand it when they laugh like that. <laughs> I have a plan. We'll need gold. Lots of gold. I have a plan too. And that plan involves gold. Lots of gold. The plan is to make me rich. And you can, you can support that plan on Patreon where you can see my videos in advance and also get monthly stickers and trading cards. That's an awful pitch. That's a terrible pitch. I know I said that I appreciated them getting right into the action in the first episode, but I expected them to explain what's going on eventually. They say they're part of an alpha team, but why? Something happened to her parents, but what? Where's Sparrow and Cal's parents? What's their situation? What's the motivation of the Harpies? Why are they here? Why do they hate that dragon guy? What sort of jurisdiction does the dragon guy have? Kalo, escaped from Otherworld prison, stolen gold in an angry- So you guys are just cops, right? Is that it? They got 17 year olds to be cops. Why don't they get paid for this? Why, why, why do they want you to do this? How did they get, how did you get into this job? They mention a lot how powerful Tara is and how she needs to hone her powers. And she has so much power that it's hard to control at times. And sometimes we see how her magic progresses. Also, if they're magic cops, 
then their prison system needs an update because the bad guys keep escaping. Like the supposed main villain, Serena. The show is painfully formulaic. There's a bad guy, they try and track down what's happening and stop the bad guy. And then they stop them and the dragon dude takes them back to Magic Land prison for them to maybe break out and cause more trouble in a later episode. Thanks to Serena. But that witch has been dealt with, so everything's okay. For now, until the next time. They even address it. They know their prison system sucks. They know the writers are gonna bring back the villains over and over again. Doing a fourth wall joke doesn't make it okay. Or was that your idea of foreshadowing? Either way, it's bad. If anything, Henry the cryptozoologist is a bigger villain just because he's such a nuisance and interrupts them from dealing with actual magical threats. And he knows about Tara Duncan and her magical friends. It's not a werewolf stealing my DVDs. I'll go to the manor and- Oh man, they run a DVD store. Ah, oh, it feels bad how dated this show is now. DVD stores were really fun to go to. Looking for something? Like werewolves, maybe? No! No, no! You'd rather not talk about it. It's cool. Oh my gosh. Is something actually progressing? Is there going to be something that breaks the cycle of the formula and adds a new element to the story? Oh wait, they have spells that erase memories. I guess nothing actually will happen. They abuse the memory erasing spell in this show a lot. Fun thing, I didn't mention this later in the script, so I thought I'd tell you now. In the beginning of the book, uh, Isabella, her grandma, tries to do a memory erasing spell like, oh no, you're not supposed to know magic exists. And then just like next chapter, Tara is like, ah, I'm so powerful. I'm gonna remember. Cause that's a recurring thing throughout the books. Like she's actually stupidly powerful to where it's a problem in the book. So. They hint at that in the show, but never develop it. You're here for the Werewolf Film Festival, right? Of course. Why am I not surprised? At least they aren't going to erase his memories. Do you think abusing erasing, memory erasing spells would cause long-term brain damage? Moonscoop is really good at making a show with a formula that manages to keep every episode feeling interesting. It relies on the formula, but introduces enough unique elements to flesh out the world or their situation. The foundation of the shows they create are always solid. They know how to work with very little. The animation style is always simple, but they flesh out everything around them to where it never feels simple, especially with their settings, like I mentioned previously. If I were really to rip into the character design, they look unimpressive. But because the show knows how to flesh out everything around them, it creates a big picture that as a whole, works incredibly well. Not only that, but given this show specifically and how it's loosely based on the books, if you only ever watch the show, they add only tidbits of stuff for you to go off of that isn't ever really fleshed out, but it allows the audience to do whatever they will with headcanons. And so it's, this is actually probably a pretty good series for fan fiction if you've never read the books. Cal, you're cute as ever, sweetie. How could you poison my best friend? I thought I was your best friend. Like this, where did this come from? I swear they add random elements that make me feel like I missed episodes, but I guess it keeps the audience on their toes? You can find random elements in this show that could spur a whole fan fiction in and of itself. Just because they give you so little, it leaves a lot to be fleshed out. When I talk about a formula, there's two ways that you could really think of it. There's the way like Dorix the Explorer, where it's the same show, just different elements. And then there's a formula like in these shows where the general plot points are repeated, but large swaths of the show are wholly original. A formula isn't necessarily bad, but it does limit the potential of a show. Tara Duncan is a show that's fun to watch when you're eating breakfast before school, or a show that works to just have on in the background while you do chores. It's not a show I can imagine binging. They introduce new characters for one-off episodes where they're friends from, un from other world visit. And it's nice, but they don't give much explanation how they know them other than they're from other worlds. What really drags the show down is that the traits of the characters don't really change much. Cal is always hitting on girls. So much for the dancing hotties. Hey. I'm Cal, a store full of girls. I love it! Or how they just cannot seem to get the teleportation spell right. Be a transporter! <laughs> what am I doing here? <clears throat> or how Cal just cannot get the grasp of any metaphor or saying. Those two will never see hoof to mouth. We'll kill two stones with one bird. Your honey bunny's a real 
ox. It's Fox. And what's funny is that they don't really give you the feeling that they're powerful spellbinders because Cal manages to cast the same time free spell that Terra did. There just isn't a lot of spells that you see in this show. There's like four. And so there isn't a way to gauge who is more powerful than the other. Hey, come on. There's like six. And it's signed your secret admirer. <laughs> wow, dude. Great job being discreet. No one is going to notice a seven foot werewolf with a cloak, especially if you stand directly in front of a window. Although I will admit they get better at teleportation halfway through the series. So I guess there is some measurement of improvement. Also, can I just mention that when a dog was stealing jewels, they put him in jail instead of like a pound or a kennel or something. When they say pets are people too, these guys mean it. Spontaneous, stunning, dazzling. Huh? This is my darling, Isabella. I sent this to her. How could I not take this opportunity? It was practically begging me to do this. This guy is really good. Roses, mm. candles. Don't you think you have more important things to do than steal this guy's moves? Roses, candles, beach. I'm sorry, what? Thank you, thank you. You saved my life. Via Mintus. What if the vampires huh? come back? What? Hold the crap up. We got something going on. Stuff just got interesting. That girl is really pretty. I feel like I've seen her before, but I can't remember where. Okay, here's my guess. She's actually from Otherworld, but her parents didn't tell her, and therefore she's lived her life as a non-spell without realizing she's actually magic. Claire does have magic in her. Maybe you want to let your family know. I don't really have any family. Crap, okay, pivoting my theory. She was abandoned on Earth, but she still originated from the other world. And then Chem thinks about bringing Claire to Otherworld for spellbinder training and Cal is going to be her teacher? There's no way that's happening, but hey, 15 episodes in and this is the most exciting thing that's happened so far, so I gotta see it through. Oh, so she's just pretending and it turns out she's the real bad guy in this episode. Wow, I'll admit that's clever. Disappointing, but clever. In case you were wondering, she's from the Thieves Guild and she needed to steal from the vampires to prove herself and the formula is completed and nothing changes. I spent a whole year's savings on this plane ticket. So you ask for a refund. Master Chen said I could go. I couldn't care less. Yeah, the ironic part is that Isabella is actually a cold and heartless bitch. That's 4,500 years Yay. old. Looks like the museum. Oh yes, a 4,500 year old obelisk has a carving of a museum that wouldn't be built for thousands of years. That's either ridiculous or whoever built that ob obelisk is really good at seeing the future. The really cool thing about this show is just how many secrets are inside her manor. They regularly find crazy new things almost every episode. There's a line, you know. How rude, kids these days have no manners. Actually, Tara has a manner, a magical one. Every episode is standalone. There isn't any overarching story. And the quality of the show gets a little better as the show progresses, but you can watch any episode and you'll basically have the same level of knowledge as someone who's been watching the entire season. There's not really anything here for Tara Duncan fans. But apparently when I went to look at the reviews, I didn't really find many people that were upset with this show. I would have assumed that people would be like, oh wow, this doesn't follow the books at all. Eh, one star. I am boycotting the company until this show is fixed. I can't believe the creators would do something to my favorite of the show. This is very much a case of if you watch the show first, you're gonna be very pleasantly surprised with the books. If you watch the books first, you're gonna be either disappointed or lukewarm towards the show. I don't really know how the fans of the books, or even the author for that matter, felt about the show. The one thing that upsets me is that you guys, if you're just watching this video, will not get to hear the surprisingly good intro to this series. And so I'll play as much of the intro song as I can without getting copyright claimed. Now, in order to fully understand the craze around Tara Duncan, I went out and bought the first book and read it. And also because I needed more content for this video. And I only read the first book so far because like, come on, I have a, I have a time crunch. I have to push, pump, pump, pump videos out. I'm probably gonna read more on my own time because honestly, I actually was enjoying it really good. But I also have like four other books I want to read. I'm a little bit of a bibliophile and there's manga that I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished, I haven't caught up on Chainsaw Man. The first book is called Tara Duncan and the Spellbinders. And there are two versions of this book that I bought because I saw two versions and I wasn't sure if there was any difference. Uh, the difference is that they have different covers. 
So I bought the exact same version of the exact same book. And you it, only one, this one's from 2012, published in English in America, translated. This one's from 2016. And you would think that this version probably has updates to the story or uh, fixed typos. And I'm not sure if that's the case because this is the version I was reading and I found a typo. <laughs> I wanted to compare and contrast the book to the show, not including the fact that Tara is 17 in the show because I'm pretty sure that's like only a thing in the English dub. I, I'm not sure if that's actually a thing in the French dub. That white strand of hair Tara has in her in the, in the show is also in the books. Like every time that her magic starts going out of control, it starts crackling. So that's a thing. Isabella is still a pretty terrible person. All she cares about are my grades. If they're good, she doesn't say anything. If they're bad, she complains. That's the only communication we have. Tara's real name is... Oh my God. Tara Tillenem Tal Barmi Ab Santa Ab Maru Paul Duncan. Hang on. Sonic, did I pronounce that right? Tara Tillenem Tal Barmi Ab Santa Ab Maru Tal Duncan. Thank you, Sonic. Also, the main bad guy is named Magister Bloodgrave, who is part of a race of spellbinders who believe that non-spells should be slaves and fights for control over the worlds. And he wears a cool mirror mask, which parallels Voldemort pretty well, I'm not gonna lie. He just looks slightly cooler. <laughs> to be frank, the first three chapters of the book is more interesting than the entirety of the show. It's a lot of action, something happens every chapter, it's very fast paced, and it gives a whole like Wizard 101 vibe if you've ever played the game or watched my video. I'm not too proud of that video. I should, I kind of want to revisit Wizard 101, but I have other things I can do. And they go to other world Really? Okay, this this is a very metallic cover. I'm gonna use the other one. Also, this is apparently a first edition. Like, that was nice. I don't know if there's any other editions other than the first, but I'm gonna use this one because it's not reflective. They go to other worlds super fast. You never go to other world in the show, which thoroughly upsets me. And I'm starting to realize just how little of a budget Moonscoop had when they were creating the series, because they kind of, I mean like, or at least I hope that's the reason why we never saw Otherworld because I mean, I don't want to just assume it's because the creators were lazy and didn't actually care. Also the reason that Terra has a Pegasus is because that's her familiar. The story is fun, but what makes it interesting is that Terra is obviously insanely strong, but her grandmother took a blood oath telling her, her fa telling da Terra's father before he died that Isabella would not allow Terra to be a wizard and would have Terra live her life as a non-spell, as a regular human. And a blood oath means that if she breaks that oath, Isabella dies. And so Terra starts realizing she's insanely powerful. She goes to other worlds, starts seeing all these things, and she's horrified to use her magic because she's afraid she's gonna kill her grandma. Now the book does share a lot of similarities with Harry Potter, like the main bad guy thinking that spellcasters are the superior race. But there is a lot of small differences that makes it a lot more unique. The world that they've, that, that, that's been created has a lot of whimsy and it's just legitimately a fun book to read. The setting feels entirely different from the Hogwarts. There's a lot of stuff in this book that you could consider fluff. There's times when they're describing the food that they're eating for like a paragraph and I just kind of skim over at, uh, over that. Um, especially since some of these chapters are kind of weirdly long. This whole book is like almost the size of Deathly Hallows. This author ain't got, like J.K. Rowling ain't got nothing on this author. First book and it's a, it's a beast. A lot of the book focuses on the history and the culture of Otherworld, as well as having Terra face and explore new challenges. And if I'm to be frank, I enjoy this book far more than Harry Potter. I couldn't even finish the first Harry Potter book. I got so bored. Also, Spera is a princess, who knew? Also, can we talk about how raw this line is from the book in chapter 12, page 261? Instead of taking responsibility for their own weaknesses, this is Master Chem, by the way, many people prefer to turn on others. That's why they beat children and women out of frustration, rage, anger, and especially weakness. You can imagine my face when I first read that line. However, I mean, it was after a girl accidentally killed a boy. Um, so I guess we already got really dark in that chapter. So yeah. However, you may be thinking, oh gosh, none of this actually lines up with the book. I can't believe, with the, with the show, I can't believe they do this. And you're right. However, this is only the first book. If we're assuming the show may be based off of more of the books that had been released around the time the show released, there were about eight novels that were released around this time. And you'd still be wrong because I read the synopsis of the eighth novel and it sounds like absolutely nothing 
uh, is happening in the book that is happening in the show. As of right now, the domain for terradonkin.com goes to this black screen with ominous links saying that the site is getting a makeover by Sam Pictures. Wait, Sam Pictures? Why does that sound familiar? The, the Princess, Princess Sam Foundation, Foundation for, for our media. media. Oh, yep, looks like this is her company. I am shocked and impressed. You can still access the old domain where you can see behind the scenes content and their le blog. She posts some stuff on her Instagram about the upcoming reboot to the show. I don't speak French, but it looks like this show was released on Disney Channel France sometime late in 2021. As for ways to watch it dubbed outside of France, I haven't been able to find any way how, but I'm sure we'll be seeing this eventually, hopefully. Unless it was announced during the production of this video, uh, I wasn't able to edit in this, uh, maybe I wasn't able to edit it in time to include it. Please feel free to flood the comments and my Twitter and my Instagram comments about how the show has been released, because... Once season one finishes airing, I'll probably do a video on it. But what happened to the original show? Why was it canceled? There is no official answer, but if you ask me, I would argue that it just didn't draw in the intended audience. The fans of the books were probably just not interested in the show because it it's not good compared to the books, or at least that's my thinking. Uh, I haven't actually asked the fans, seeing as not, not that big of a community online for it anymore. <laughs> Fandom's been a little dormant for years. As a show, it's not bad. As an adaptation of the books, it's pretty garbage. Or maybe I'm wrong and the fans love it. I tried looking for a reason as to why the show was canceled, uh, but it just keeps saying, all the fans keep saying that it's been renewed for another season. And, uh, which you know, it wasn't. Sadly, this isn't the first time I've seen a fandom absolutely certain that their favorite show isn't dead. And the Tara Duncan fans should be grateful that they're getting a reboot because us chaotic fans are still waiting. If you want to see my videos a month in advance, I have a Patreon linked below. I also have uh, stickers and trading cards that you can get every month. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. If I'm wrong, please tell me because I didn't really have a lot of resources for this video. Stay beautiful and keep playing.